A warm, warm welcome to this episode of Blooms for You. This is my sidekick, Cousin It. I am going to still use him for all the blooms that he has because those blooms are dedicated to everybody that watches this video, be it on the day that it airs or six months, a year down the line, whenever. Your time is appreciated. Thank you so much for being here. Cousin It with a little bit of a scruffy look at the moment, but that doesn't take away from the fact that he is absolutely still bursting with blooms. So these blooms are for you. Now, if you haven't seen my nighttime video, I do have a little story to tell before we get into the whole purpose of this episode. And that is to say thank you individually to people with blooms that have opened up. But I have to tell you a story. When I did that night blooms discovery tour, <laughs> <laughs> he was in pitch black and I shone the spotlight on him with no mercy whatsoever. He didn't have his glasses on, he had his pajamas on and that is what annoyed him. It's not the fact that I woke him up but I was told in no uncertain terms the next morning that how dare I not make him aware that this was going to happen. He did not appreciate the surprise of being found in his pajamas he would have rather had his cousin It's going on the Ritz outfit. So that was my big boo-boo. And well, if this were to happen again in future, now I know he wants to be fully dressed in his fancy attire as opposed to what I did. Walk in, lights on and ta-da! pajamas. Anyway, that as a little anecdote, as a little feedback from what happened with my nighttime video. Now, let's go and have a look-see as to who is in bloom, whose name came up, and what blooms opened up at the same time. And say some thank yous. Darwinara Blue Charm. Who'd have thought, who'd have thought, considering the conditions that this one was actually developing its spikes under. I have to say, I am so surprised and I'm going to take advantage of this spike and dedicate these blooms to Natalie Zadrozna and Norma Perez. Now you may be seeing some raindrops occasionally and that is fine I think. I'm under an umbrella. It has been a monkey's wedding day today. Rain, sun, rain, sun and when it rains and there is a rainbow then in Africa we called it a monkey's wedding. Anyway, Natalie Zadrozna and Norma Perez, here is my Darwinara Blue Charm in bloom. Surprise, surprise. This orchid last year was a little bit of a hit and miss for me because I hadn't given it enough light during the summer and it didn't bloom for the longest time. So imagine my surprise when this spike started to form when I had the terrible, terrible weather conditions in March. And we see some results of the dark. Well, the lack of light, we can see how the petals and sepal up here is fused together. A very stark reminder of my Neostylus Lucneri Blue, the funky one, the one that continues to puzzle me. But this orchid has bloomed clean in the past, so this is definitely something to do with low light levels. You can see that the two that opened first, they are a little deformed, and then as light levels increased, everything looks normal again. But wow, if we were to have a Neo season a little bit sooner, then Darwinara Blue Charm does that for me. It's got that beautiful Neo Phoenicia fragrance, the falcata, the citrusy, lemon powdery fragrance. But we can appreciate this fragrance during the day. Not like the Neo falcata, where you have to go at night to appreciate the fragrance. This one, oh yes, this is giving me great, great vibes for the Neo season and hopefully the falcata will bloom nicely for us in 2022 again. Having said all that, just to stick with what we're doing here and not get carried away and appreciate the moment, Darwinara Blue Charm, this spike, it might be the first of another one, seeing as it's bloomed so early this year. This spike with these blooms, they bloom for you, Natalie Zadrozna and Norma Perez. Thank you to the two of you so very, very much for your support on my channel. You are both appreciated. My purdy, purdy, purdy Guariciclia 
Kyoguchi, happy field. I am very pleased <laughs> with every bloom that I ever get from my orchids, considering the very challenging times that this orchid specifically was forming her buds. I am even more pleased to be able to have some blooms from her because she is one of my little favorites. These blooms are dedicated to Akeminmin von Tassen Farms and Deborah Shorten. My Kyoguchi Happy Field. Well, the blooms aren't very, very big. All right, so we'll take that into consideration. But it's not the size of the blooms that matter when it comes to this orchid. It is her fragrance. Her fragrance is one of my most favorite perfumes from the perfume maker Issey Miyake. And I believe it's his classic fragrance, the Eau de Issey Miyake. Now, many, many times when I smell my orchids and appreciate their fragrance, it's not that I don't appreciate specific fragrances. I do appreciate every fragrance, but there are some fragrances when you think, oh, well, I wish they would bottle that. I would wear it. Well, it would appear that Issey Miyake maybe smelt this bloom and said, I have to make a perfume out of it. But whoever came first, the chicken or the egg story, whether he smelt this perfume on this orchid and then created his fragrance, he nailed it or vice versa, <laughs> the person that hybridized this orchid nailed it. It is divine, and that is why I'm so happy. At least she gave me some blooms. Last year, I had approximately 11 blooms. This year, I have five, but they still pack a beautiful, beautiful punch. Completely unexpected and out of the blue, or yellow as in this case. I wonder if all of this was in focus. But she is so cute, so cute. There's really nothing big and blousy or spectacular about these blooms other than her fragrance. But I do like my little compact hybrids, and that is what she is. She's not a big orchid. Quite small, actually, if one would call it that. And she hasn't been doing well on the root front since I repotted her. So this growth, its roots failed. I may have a few from this growth in the pot, but not as much as I was hoping. You can see how they stopped growing. But that didn't stop her from blooming. And I don't see any shriveling on the pseudobulbs either. So I'm going to be enjoying these little blooms for as long as they are around. But yeah, that is my Guariciclia Kyoguchi Happy Field. But the blooms, they belong to Akeminin, Fontassen Farms and Deborah Shorten to say thank you to the three of you so much for your support on my channel. Very, very much appreciated. And I'm very, very happy to be able to give you this gorgeous, gorgeous blooming as my thank you to you. Best blooming ever from my world stick Chiara, Melissa Brianne. The four spikes and all the blooms together they are blooming for Susan Gapich, Friends Making Music, Michael N, Liuba Liuba, June Dewar, Zeng Young, Willow Bear Mindfulness, Maram00157, DJ Pizza, and Eckehart Pummer. So, right, Wilstakara, Melissa Brianne. There is a Melissa Brianne Dark, which I thought I actually had the dark version. But seeing as now she has been with me so many years and her blooming has steadied out and this is the best blooming I've ever had, I went back to investigate the difference between a Melissa Brianne normal as opposed to dark. And it turns out I have the normal version, not the dark. So correcting myself in previous videos from yesteryear because my lip, well, because the lip of the Melissa Brianne here has like a white waterfall finish. If this lip was dark, as in the petals and sepals, that would be Melissa Brianne dark. This is not a dark, but it is a Wurstekara Melissa Brianne. And I totally forget who told me that also in a video from a long time ago. So if you are still around and watching, I appreciate the identity of this orchid because I did not know anything about this orchid when she came into my collection. She was a sorry little rescue off the rescue table that already had all diverse kind of fauna growing in it, some of which I even saved <laughs> and is still alive. But yeah, she was a sad little thing. And only after a while did she then start to bloom and 
This, after three and a half, maybe four years, is her best blooming ever. And she is beautifully fragrant as well. She has a rose fragrance, a floral fragrance, and it's very, very general, but that is exactly what she smells like. I can't get into any more specific details about it because her fragrance is rose and floral. And she's very intense. She is right now on my blooming alley where she actually lives all year round. So her temperatures drop to something that I consider an abomination for an orchid, but it hasn't phased her clearly. I also have a feeling that the blooms have gotten bigger this time around. Either way, after three years, she's always bloomed reliably for me. But it seems that now she's settled into the groove, she considered herself officially rescued. <laughs> For which I'm very grateful, to be honest, yeah. Okay, so once again, to say thank you so, so much for your support on my channel, Susan Gapich, Friends Making Music, Michael N, Yuba Yuba, June Dewar, Zheng Yang, Willow Bear Mindfulness, Maram00157, DJ Pizza and Eckhard Palmer, my Wilster Chiara, Melissa Brianne, all these fabulous blooms, they bloom for you. Thank you. I so appreciate your support. Another orchid that gives me so much joy to be able to dedicate as a first-time bloomer on my patio. This is Lelia Flava. Beautiful color of yellow. I do apologize that we are somewhat in the shade. You might think it's a bit dark here, but trust me, it's not. If I put her anywhere else, the white reflection of the facade would absolutely wash this color out. And if I do that, then other things go back out of focus. So I am not going to be messing with the settings while I'm filming this and I still hope the beauty of these blooms comes through. This Lelia Flava. Well, let me get to who she's dedicated to. I'm getting carried away. Focus, Nina. <laughs> right, Lelia Flava blooms for Tommy, FL69, Sepide Dalajo, Carmela Carey, Bint E. Mohammed Cooking Recipes. Right, for you, I have this, what I consider super special and I'm super excited about, clearly. Cartwheels around the patio, everyone together now. This Lelia Flava has to be filmed today because I'm expecting more wind coming. And you can see that on a somewhat no wind day, you can tell <laughs> there is a breeze around because of that ever so exaggerated long, long spike because the orchid is all the way down here. <laughs> Talk about making a statement. But, oh, I love it. I love it so much. There we go. Please hold still. <gasps> Money shot. And here comes a teeny tiny breeze and the spike goes bonkers. So we'll just zoom out a little bit again and hopefully we can get the focus back. Super difficult to film. And again, that's why I'm doing it today. I feel the orchid is somewhat able to hold up and stay in focus, please. I just stopped the camera because it is very, very difficult. Anyway, let me get back to Tommy FL69, Sepide Dalaho, Carmela Carey, Bint E. Muhammad cooking recipes. <laughs> because, oh, yeah, you see, as she bobs around, the camera is like going, What do you want me to look at? And I'm like, The yellow. Look at the yellow. Look at the beautiful lip. Look at that curly lip structure on all of these blooms coming up right here. This is what I'm talking about. This is my personal affinity and fascination with anything repiculous. And the color, oh, it's like having the fancy version of a daffodil on my patio. Daffodils here in my area, well, they might bloom if you get them from a garden center, but they are not good in the ground because it doesn't really get cold enough for long enough. So what else can one do but bring in a Lelia Flava and have it bloom during springtime? <laughs> and I'm getting totally carried away. I am going to allow myself this luxury because it's the first wind still day that I have. And to see her this close... The viewfinder is reflecting the color perfectly. It is even picking up on the striations of the lip there, which is normally quite difficult to document. 
So yes, I'm geeking out and I really do hope Tommy FL69, Sebi de Dalajo, Carmela Carey, Bint E, Mohammed Cooking Recipes, that you are thrilled with this orchid because she blooms for you as a thank you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I am in awe. <laughs> I am in awe. I love it. And you guys, thank you. Really, really appreciate. If you've listened to all of this, know that I am just super thrilled to have this orchid, have your names come up and be able to do this <laughs> and have her in the viewfinder. While well, I thank you for your support, Lelia Flava, she's all yours. Well, wait, wait, what did I just say? No, let me correct that. The blooms are yours. The orchid is mine. Well, I really hope that you enjoyed this episode. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some blooms. Personally, I am always very, very happy to be able to put this little series out. It gives me the opportunity to see the names that I've been able to recognize over the past year. If you've commented and your name is there for the first time, it goes on the list. If you have subscribed and it is a public account, I can see that as well. Your name goes on the list. If it is your first time here and you've never commented, please, please leave a comment. Let me know that you're here. Your name will go on the list. Unfortunately, orchid blooms only happen ever so often. They do take their sweet time, yes, but the list is ongoing and eventually there will be a bloom or two for you. Thank you so, so much for watching. Cousin It and myself, we appreciate your time. In this... <laughs> okay, okay, wait. So... I have to continue now to say that the two of us now wish you a very beautiful day. Both of us, stop it, he's making me laugh. Both of us want to add a single condition to that though, that you stay safe, please. Both of us are now saying take care and bye.